Hey guys, welcome back to Disney Couples Reshuffled. I'm Pandragon Dan, and I've had a shave! So how are you guys enjoying Disney Couples Reshuffled so far? I don't know about you, but I'm having a whale of a time. I'm sure Morgan is too. We've got three teams to get through still, so it's not over yet. And for Team 6, we have a combination of Greek mythology and a classic fairy tale. So let's move on to couple number 6, Cinderella and Hercules. We start, as always, with the heroine of this couple, and that's Cinderella herself. For this one, I shall be looking at both the animated version of Cinderella and the live-action version of Cinderella, mainly because I think the live-action has a bit more to give than the animated version. Well, in my opinion, anyway. In the animated version, Cinderella is voiced by Disney legend Eileen Woods, and in the live-action version, she is played by Lily James, who you may remember from such shows as Downton Abbey, and soon to be appearing in Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. If you recall from when we did March Disney Villain Madness and Morgan talked about Lady Tremaine, you remember that she said that Cinderella is the most retold fairy tale of all time, which in turn makes Cinderella one of the most iconic Disney princesses of all time. Now if I'm being honest, I was never a huge fan of the animated version of Cinderella. I don't know, it just kind of felt a little bland to me. But that's probably just because I didn't really appreciate the predicament that Cinderella was in. Thankfully, after seeing the live-action Cinderella, it made me appreciate the character of Cinderella a heck of a lot more, and I now understand why she's such an iconic character. I mean, think of it this way. She had a mother and father that loved her very much, but when her mother died, her father was forced to marry uber-bitch Lady Tremaine. And when her father passed on, Lady Tremaine, jealous of her beauty, forced her into pretty much slave labour. After that, Cinderella was forced to wait on Lady Tremaine and her daughters hand and foot, getting absolutely no time to herself. And that's all just because Lady Tremaine was jealous of how beautiful she looked. See what I mean? Uber bitch. Now that I actually appreciate the story a bit more, I just think Cinderella goes through way more hardships than any other Disney princess. I mean, just look at her life. It's just dreadful. What has she really got to look forward to? And even when it does look like some good's going to go away, Lady Tremaine steps in to make sure that doesn't happen. I mean, the stepsisters even rip her ball gown to pieces for crying out loud. Jeez, give her a break. What does she ever do to you guys? Thinking about it, this is probably one of the reasons why Cinderella is so beloved, because a lot of people can appreciate her story. We've all felt trapped in our lives at some point, whether it's in a loveless marriage, a job we hate, or just whatever. There's always been a moment where we've just felt so miserable in our life and nothing we do can seem to escape it. But luckily, thanks to her prince and the fairy godmother, Cinderella finally gets a happy ending. Oh, by the way, if there are any fairy godmothers out there, I just want to let you know the lottery's on this weekend, so any chance of a winning ticket? Yeah, okay, thanks. Then again, on the other side of the coin, you could argue that Cinderella had a pretty good life before she met Lady Tremaine, but with her mother and father. After all, she did live in a rich family until her mother died and her father was forced to remarry. At least in the live-action movie, the Cinderella film, she was already kind of rich, but that was kind of exempted that she was forced to be a servant. Now, interestingly enough, Cinderella's hair colour is often a source of debate among some fans. In the films, Cinderella's hair is a burnt orange colour, but in the Disney parks and some other franchises, they have her as a blonde. The most common consensus is that she's actually strawberry blonde, which is kind of a mixture of both. For those of you who aren't in the know, the glass slippers are actually a symbolic message in Cinderella. Because the glass shoes are so delicate, the idea that Cinderella can walk in them means that she can adapt to any situation, even the most uncomfortable. It also symbolises how delicate Cinderella is as a character, but at the same time she is also very kind-hearted and also very beautiful in her own way. I think this is more prominent in the live-action films, because from an early age, Cinderella was taught to be kind-hearted. Which in turn, is one of the reasons why the prince falls for her. Cinderella is often considered the leader of the Disney princesses, as she's always in the centre during publicity photos. This has been a source of some controversy amongst fans, because many consider Snow White to be the first Disney princess, so she should be at the forefront. But that being said, Cinderella is probably one of the more tragic Disney princesses, so maybe Disney feel that she's more relatable than the others. Let's move on to Cinderella's prince, or in this case, warrior prince. Stepping up to take her hand is the Greek demigod himself, Hercules! What I quite like about Hercules is that he was voiced by Tate Donovan, who played a major part in 24 Live Another Day, in which he played the White House Chief of Staff. So I think it goes without saying that this version of Hercules is based off the character of Greek mythology, but with a few minor tweaks. Born the son of Zeus, Hercules was endowed with enormous strength, and through the film he learns how to use it to be a hero, which is basically his character arc. Hercules is pretty much the He-Man of the Disney Universe, and he can punch out gods and titans in equal measure. According to the official Disney Universe, the only ones that can outclass him in terms of strength are his father and the genie from Aladdin. Hercules also has incredible stamina and endurance, and seems almost impossible to hurt. And whilst he can use weapons, he's no slouch bare-handed either. 
And being the son of a god, he's also immortal. Although he did give this up when he chose to live a mortal life with Meg. Now despite his superpowers, he's not exactly the sharpest tool of the box, if you get my meaning. He's not really stupid as such, but he does tend to rely on his strength to get him out of situations more than his brains. And that can lead him into trouble, as he can easily be outsmarted. And his strength is, ironically, one of his greatest weaknesses, as it made him a bit of an outcast with the humans of the world. Well, you know what Spider-Man says, with great power comes great responsibility. Now on the other side of the coin, he is arguably one of the most pure-hearted of all the Disney heroes. He will put his own life behind others in order to save them, and he will always rush to help people in need. Also, even when he becomes famous, he never lets the fame go to his head. He's always a very down-to-earth and very kind-hearted soul. So really, that does make him the purest of all the Disney heroes. Now, despite being the son of the King and the Queen of the Gods, Hercules himself is actually not considered an official Disney prince. This could be due to the fact that Hercules wasn't a major box office success, kind of similar to what happened to Alonri in The Black Cauldron. Oh, come on, Disney! Give these guys a break! It wasn't their fault their movies didn't do well financially. Now, here's a final fact I want to leave you guys with, and this is actually something which has been debated amongst fans for quite a while. If you take Greek mythology into account, then you may know that Zeus and Poseidon are brothers. Poseidon had a number of sons. One of them was, you guessed it, King Triton. And as we all know, King Triton is the father of our favourite mermaid, Ariel. So if we look at it that way, then Hercules and Ariel are actually related. That being said, this would also bring King Triton's age into account, because the Little Mermaid happens in the 1800s, and Hercules happens about 3,000 years in the past. Then again, King Triton is a god, and I guess gods don't age? That's a nice little tidbit for you. You can have that one for free. So why would Cinderella and Hercules make a great couple? Because Hercules has a good heart and always willing to help those in need, he could just barge through and rescue Cinderella from Lady Tremaine and her stepsisters. After all, who's going to argue with a guy that can punch out a god? He would then carry her off into the sunset, and once again, Cinderella would have a happy ending. And let's not kid ourselves, if you're going to have a boyfriend in the Disney universe, Hercules is probably one of the better ones. He's strong, he's powerful, and he'll treat you right. There you go, perfect boyfriend for you. As with all these Disney couples we shuffled videos, this is just my opinion. But I'd really appreciate it if you agree with me to give these guys a vote in the polls. On Morgan's team, she has Prince Philip from Sleeping Beauty and Pocahontas from her films. That's quite an interesting team up. But can Prince Philip defend Pocahontas in the same way that Hercules can? Your votes will decide. As always, they're down below in the description box. And make sure you check out Morgan's videos first before you vote, just to be fair. Don't forget to like and share this video wherever you can, and subscribe to our channels. And we've got two more couples to go through, and those videos will be up in the coming days. Take care, see you later.